Kelly, good morning. Music like water. I will address this subject for you today. I want to thank Neil Dixon for bringing me out here once again. He is a real glutton for punishment. I've been here a few years in a row. Thanks, Neil. Thanks, thanks to Kriya for sponsoring this event and my first class ticket. Ah, just kidding. Um, uh, I'm very happy to be here. Um, before I get started, I want to mention a few things. Um, I get a lot of feedback from people talking about, you know, these are great ideas, great principles, you know, great whatever, you know, but, you know, it'll never happen. And I'm here today to tell you that if we don't fix how music is being used in the digital age, we're finished. Right? This has to happen. It's not something that's an option. It's not something that can take another five years. It's something that's utterly crucial and imminent right now. Um, if you go to my website, gurdpresents.com, you can download about 50 PDFs and slideshows. Uh, I have a, a, a great many slides today, so you can, if you want to take notes, of course, you're welcome. But it will be easier if you just download from gurdpresents.com. Sometime this afternoon, I'll be putting up this very slideshow as well. So quickly about me, what is a futurist? Well, uh, to be honest, it's just a work in title, obviously. Uh, I talk to people and they say, well, you're talking about the future a whole lot, so I figured I should call myself a futurist. Uh, probably utterly insulting to Paul Sappho and other people who are actually real futurists. But it's a work in title, so I, I quite have come to like it. I do a lot of think tanks. Um, I'm, advi I'm an advisor to Sony BMG in the UK on the future of the record business. Uh, I'm a musician and composer as well. And the CEO of Significant, which I'll show you briefly in a minute. And of course, many of you already know my book, The Future of Music, which in a way is sort of now the past of music because the book is two years old. Uh, sadly enough, lots of things in the book are still very much about the future. So uh, it's out now in, uh, in Finnish, in Japanese, in German, French, and in English, so you can pick your language. Uh, my new book uh, is called The End of Control. I'm working hard on it. Uh, it's uh, hopefully coming out by the end of the year. Uh, this is my blog. So just real quick um, about my new company, Sonific, not as a promotion, but as an example of what I do. So I don't just talk about it, I also try to do it, which is uh, a, a mean feat. Uh, so what Sonific does is we provide music for blogs and social networks with the only legal provider of what's called music widgets, which are little flash players you can drop into your web page. We've got hundreds of thousands of users, 200,000 songs that we have licensed from the master owners, all independents, of course. You may wonder why, I'll talk about that later. Um, and you can use our music to drop it into a blog, a social network page, a photo page, your private home page, anything that's personal. This is what it looks like. We call it the song spot. And if you want to see examples, you just go to significmusic.com. This is what MySpace looks like with our song spot in it on the right. So the song spot is essentially a flash player. You can move around the page and put that anywhere to promote bands. We've recently done a deal with the Bare Naked Ladies. And Terry McBride, of course, is very much a, a soulmate, you could say, on these issues. So this is the Bare Naked Ladies page. Uh, it's significbnl.com. And this is some feedback. We call it Soundtracks for Your Digital Life. And we have thousands and thousands and thousands of users raving about um, being able to use music on the websites. It's, of course, free to the user and, and true staying with the internet paradigm. If you wonder how we make money, I won't address that now because it's a long question. So moving straight on. Two things today. Digital music distribution is out of control. And that is a good thing. Out of control means we don't control the distribution of music any longer. We want to. We don't. I'll tell you what that means and how that is good. Music like water will make all of us a lot more money than music as plastic. On plastic. Whatever you want to call it. Music as a service can make all of us very wealthy if we go about it the right way. Music as a utility, I'll show you why, makes a lot of sense. Eventually, of course, the analogy breaks down, so I don't want to take it too, too far of a, of, a, of a place here. But um, First, the issue of control. New technologies usually disrupt severely, but always make the market bigger. The videotape added 40% to the video market. Right? The Xerox machine, right? did it kill the book publishers? No. And neither will Google Print kill the book publishers. Elton John, Cliff Richard, and others, 1981, said, home taping is killing music. People can record us, they won't care, right? What happened? Home taping didn't do a thing for music. It actually helped people to share and propagate music. 
So what we are seeing is big technology changes take longer, but when they do hit, it's bad. And it, it's been 10 years now since MP3 came around, and this is the year where it's hitting. Right? We've always thought that these sales are going to suffer. Well, this year, 40% in Canada. It may be 50% in the US this year. And just wait until next year. Okay? It has taken much longer, but now is the time for action. A short history of losing control. The printing press. Who lost control? The Pope lost control. Right? The Pope was the only person who could talk about what's in the Bible. And he was speaking about it in Latin. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Thank you for the addition. So, what happened with the printing press, of course, all of a sudden you could print Bibles, and before you knew it, Bibles were available in German, French, and all other languages, and the control of the exclusive Word of God in parentheses was over. Oh, of course, the internet removed control, the first browser, and of course, what's happening now, wireless broadband, and the next step is mobile communications. We're losing control step by step by step in a much further way. This is a, a, a sort of a snapshot of a brain of, uh, of a kid, could be my son, the Game Boy, the cell phone, the YouTube, the MySpace, and the nutshells. Right? This is how we're losing control of people's brains. Now, this is what's happening today. This is how lots of things are being done. This is how many of you buy stuff. It's about viral marketing as the end of controlling distribution as such, right? The end of controlling attention of the MTV and the big major networks era. Steve Jobs, a couple weeks ago, put a bomb in our lap and said, DRMs haven't worked and may never work to halt music piracy. People find this self-serving. That could be, frankly, I don't care. He is still right because controlling music is an obsession of the past. If you are interested in controlling music, you don't belong here because you won't make money. You won't make money for us, for the artist, you won't serve the consumer, you won't serve the writer. It's not about control, it's about participating in the use of music. That is the future. Participating means licensing standards, means uh, platforms that everybody can tap into, means agreements, it means something where everybody can pay that wants to pay, and I'll tell you, 95% of people want to pay for music. They don't want to rip us off just because they can, they have to rip us off at this point. I'll show you why in a second. Research from eMarketing shows about European industry leaders, of course, they didn't interview many, of, many people, but it's still a pretty good research basically said that 62% of European music industry executives says that dropping DRM would be a great way to boost the take up on music. If I talk to any of you privately, or any of people that I work with all over the place uh, in major music companies, they all say the same thing. So why do we still have DRM? I don't know. 